Hey, what's up everybody? Today let's talk a little bit about Obsession Bow's new DEFCON HZ7 bow. Now this is a hybrid cam bow, which means that you have a control cam, a power cam, and a single yoke split harness here. And at the end of the day, what that means is that you have a lot of tuning options to tune this bow with. The cam system on this bow offers you draw length options from 27 inches all the way up to 30 and a half inches. All right, so the specs right out of the box of the bow is a uh, has a 33 and a half inch axle to axle and a six and three quarter inch brace height. I spent some time shooting the bow and tuning the bow and trying different things until I felt like I got the best performance out of the bow and the most forgiveness. Okay, so I've got the bow set up at 70 pounds and I'm a 30 inch draw. And at the end of the day, I ended up with um, 33 and 3 eighths inch from axle to axle, and I'm 6 and 11 sixteenths on the brace height. Okay, so regarding speed, straight out of the box with an IBO rating, and I didn't have anything on the string, not even a D-loop, no peep, anything like that. But what I will do is I'll, I'll tie some dental floss around the string until I create a, you know, a good-sized knot so that when I'm drawing the bow back, my release doesn't slide up the bow and you know, knock your teeth out. But anyway, at, um, again, IBO rating, I'm shooting uh, 70 pounds. I'm a 30-inch draw. The arrow weighed 351 grains, just one more grain than IBO. That is, I ended up with a 341, 342 feet per second on average. Now, with my hunting setup, I'm shooting a GoTip XT Hunter 340 spine arrow. It's 29 and a quarter inches long. Um, weighs right around 426 grains, and I'm averaging about 307 feet per second. With that, a couple times I shot 306, a couple times 308, but I'm averaging right at 307. Okay, rigged out as you see it here. I've got a set of sights on there, the arrow rest, the stabilizer. I don't have a peep on it. Um, I am shooting a, the Archery Innovations little no peep device here. It doesn't weigh much, but it weighs something. Anyway, the bow comes in at 6.2 uh, 6 pounds, which isn't too bad. Uh, regarding the color, uh, color options that Obsession offers, I chose the real tree Escape. And I know you're not going to, you know, it's not going to do much justice with this cell phone video I'm doing here. But Obsession offers a lot of different color options, including like three different cam color options and different color string options. And um, they use the color fusion process, which makes their risers and limbs just look awesome. Okay, let's talk a little bit about tuning the bow. So straight out of the box, I put the um, arrow rest on the bow, kind of eyeballed everything. I was uh, getting a bad paper tear and whatnot, so I had to move the rest until I got a good paper tear. Made a little bit of uh, changes in the yoke there. Um, ended up with a perfect bullet hole paper tear for both a fletched and a bare shaft, but I didn't like the arrow position. The arrow was sitting, like if you're, if you're looking at the bow here, the arrow was sitting, you know, kind of pointing to the right of the bow for me. So I didn't like that. So I moved the rest out to 13 sixteenths, retuned everything, and still managed to get me a perfect paper tear, uh, both with fleshed and a bare shaft, with a rest set at 13 sixteenths. Now in doing that, you know, I had to make a little bit of adjustments on the yoke, you know, twist here, twist there, and I did a little bit of a tuning, meaning a half a twist, a full twist, in the control cables. But um, also doing that, I don't like a, I don't like a mushy wall at full draw. I like a rock solid wall. So by the time I got through tuning the bow, I mean the bow comes back and it just stops. And I love the way that feels because that way you can set into the wall a little bit better. And for me, it helps me not to creep as long as I'm staying hard on the wall there. Okay, let's talk about the draw cycle in this bow. I love the draw cycle. Uh, on most of the Obsession Bows, and this one's no different. For me, that's Obsession Bows legacy, which drives me to shoot their bows every year, is they've got a smooth draw cycle. But what's great about it, because there's a lot of bows out there, you know, with pretty good draw cycles. But what I really love about the draw cycle and the Obsession Bows is they don't sacrifice speed to acquire that really smooth draw cycle. Um, it feels like I'm shooting 70 pounds here. But drawing this bow back, you feel like you're shooting 60, 65 pounds, and I love that. And also, the way, the way this bow draws, it kind of stacks pretty quick. So as soon as you begin to draw, you, you pretty much jump right up to 70. And then it just kind of holds that smooth feeling all the way back. And you're just about at full draw 
and you're expecting that big hump to roll over and hit the wall, but this bow doesn't do that. The draw just continues to come back nice and smooth, and all once you hit the wall, and you're like, wait a minute, where's the hump at? So that makes this a really, really sweet drawing bow. I do love Obsession Bow's draw cycles. Okay, as far as how the bow points, the bow points really well. Um, without having to add long extended stabilizers with a certain amount of weight at the end and whatnot. And full draw, it doesn't, I mean, I, I use my pen sinks on the dot and it just pretty much sits there. Uh, for me, and this is my habit, you know, the pen wants to slowly sink, but that's, that's for me with every bow out there. Um, and, you know, and I tell myself it's a mental game and I make it stop. But the pen doesn't get up there on the dot and start doing this. The bow just points, it does really good. And you see the only stabilizer that I have on here. Now, and the reason I even have one on here is because when I shoot a bow, I like the bow at the shot to go ahead and tilt forward. I like it to get out of the way of the arrow. So the bow balances really well. It, it might be just a touch top heavy, but I like the bow to go forward. So I put just enough weight on my stabilizer. So at the shot, the bow does want to go forward and kind of get out of the way while you're doing the rest of your form, your back tension and whatnot. Okay, one other thing I wanted to point out is the grip on this bow. I don't know if this is going to do it any justice here, but it's a thin grip compared to a lot of bows I see out there or a lot of bows that I feel out there. And I like a thin grip. It, it does have a nice little flat spot, but it doesn't have sharp round corner edges. And what I like about that is it feels like it consistently gets in the same spot of my hand when I'm at full draw as opposed to feeling like I got sharp edges and I'm trying to wrap my palm around it. And a lot of you guys that know me, y'all see me shoot with gloves on. I get called Michael Jackson glove guy sometimes because I always shoot with gloves on that are um, just, I think they're a polyester. This is a really, really slick glove. And what that does for me is every time I draw the bow back, it just sinks right back to the same position because that glove is so slick. It just puts the bow right back in that same position every time, which is all there is to archery. If you want to be a professional archery shooter, all you have to do is do the same exact thing every time. But being that we're humans, we can't do that. So I try to you know, take, a, take advantage of anything I can find that helps with that. Okay, so all in all, I have to say that this bow is extremely easy to shoot. It's easy to tune. It's very forgiving. You know, once you go through your tuning process, it uh, has very respectable speeds. And, um, I mean, with the draw cycle being so smooth shooting, you know, up to 70 pounds, the bow is fun to shoot because you don't have to work to shoot the bow. I mean, I've shot bows in the past to where the hump was so bad that I actually dreaded coming home in the evening and slinging arrows from that particular bow. Okay, so I did a few shots for you to check out here. Um, I shot at uh, 30 yards, 60 yards, and 80 yards. And all this is without a peep sight. Like I said, I don't shoot a peep. And I um, also did a couple of 20 yard shots. I did one with a bare shaft and one with a fletch, just so you can see that it's tuned well enough to hit together at 20 yards. Now I will admit that at 30 yards, my bare shaft uh, kind of started spreading apart away from my, 20, uh, from my fletched shaft. And actually, I should probably shoot a little bit heavier spine just because of the length of my arrow. Because what I did, I put, put a little bit heavier spine with a little bit shorter arrow, and I was uh, my bare shaft and flat shaft was hitting together at 30 yards. But I'm shooting my hunting setup, so I tune it around that. But yeah, check these out.
Uh, that was 80 yards with the HZ7. Let's go see what we did. I can't really tell from here. Get my arrow puller because I'm shooting at some old hurricane targets. And they uh, they were good for about a month or two as far as pulling the arrow out with ease goes. But after that, it takes a bulldozer to get these arrows out sometimes. There you have it. When I went just a little high. Thirty yards, Defcon HZ7. That works. It's going to be the twenty-yard bare shaft test with a against a flat shaft. We're zooming in. So you can see where the impact is. Let's see if we can see it from there. Next is the bear shaft. If you can see that. Looks like they're just about touching each other. Whoa. Zoom it out, walk down there. And there you have it. Bear shaft, flat shaft from the DEFCON HZ7, 20 yards. 60 yard group coming up. All right, guys, so I've always said there's a lot of good bows on the market today. You need to get out there and shoot every one that you're interested in and just find the one that works for you because every bow has a piece of something that the other bow may not have that you like. So shoot them all. I feel like if you shoot the Obsession bows, and especially this HZ7, you're going to be impressed with it. So I um, hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.